five and then we'll go. Ah, Great. okay. Hello, guys. Welcome again, Vic and everybody who's just joining us. So if you've been with me before, then you know the drill. If you've not been with me before, then you get to see my beautiful face. And that's, you know, never a disappointment. <laughs> At least I like to think inside my head. I'm here with the wonderful Nick Christensen. And Hi, guys, <laughs> exactly. Hello. For the first five <laughs> minutes, we're going to be talking really, um, well, in, allowing everybody to introduce themselves. So for anyone who's just tuning in, please do tell us, Vic, as well as Cristala, as well as everyone else who's just joining, let us know what city and country that you're from or you're watching this webinar, as well as letting us know what, what, what you do for a living. I, I'm assuming you're in, of course, marketing, <laughs> uh, but let us know what niche or vertical specifically. Hey, Greener SEO, good to see a familiar face in the audience. Hey, team, three pipe. This is Nick's people, Camden, London. <laughs> Camden's a good area. Oh, got... <laughs> so, so Anton, boot out the three pipe team because uh, <laughs> Nick's about to say some racy stuff. <laughs> uh, so we've got Cristala Oxtenar, if I've got that right. Um, you're in, so your name's Dan and you're in Helsingborg, Sweden. So we've got some Swedes in the house. We've got Aaron at Barefoot SEO. We've got London SEO consultant. Hello, Aaron. How you doing, buddy? And we've got, of course, Mr. Ah, Mr. Greener SEO. I know that I know you, and you're in Texas. Uh, what, what's your actual name, dude? It'd be it'd be good to to know. Hello, ah, Chris. You know what? So Cristala, and I should say that Cristala uh, Dan. He runs a crystal shop. Ah, cool. That's pretty interesting. We've got our first crystal shop business owner here. I, I, well, may, maybe there've been others that have attended and lurked, but we'll we'll keep it going. We've got some guys from Boston. Post and Ward Marketing. Hello from Boston, guys. How are you guys doing? You're in the tech, health, con healthcare, and consumer brand space. Brilliant. We've got Villa. Hold on. We've got Villa da Filicaja. Maybe that's right. I'm not sure. But Antonio from Italy. Antonio is a name I can work with. Hey, Antonio. Vino75, an online wine shop. Ah, that's pretty good. We've got some really interesting people in here today. <laughs> Vic, Vic has just started a digital marketing consultant practice. So Vic, today's going to be really good for you, actually. Really, really good for you. Uh, because we're talking about how to build up you know, an Amazon SEO agency. And Nick's going to be taking us through that. Ah, Dom. So greener SEO. Now, Dom. All right, Dom. Hello to you, sir. I'm going to make sure that I um, remember that now for the future. So Dom, hello to you, my friend. We've also got Michael Moschella, Boston number one. <laughs> Let us know what you do out there in Boston, Michael. It'd be good. And um, yeah, so um, Cristala, well, no, forget the name. Mr. Crystal Shop owner, Dom, uh, Dan rather, is, um, is what is he doing? He's, he's saying that my pronunciation wasn't half bad. That's always good. Always, <laughs> always good to see. <laughs> so, guys, if you're just joining the webinar right now, then as I mentioned, for the first couple of minutes, please do introduce yourselves. Let us know what country you're from. Let us know what city you're from. Let us know what job it is that you do. And then in a couple of minutes, we'll get the actual webinar on the road. So who else have we got here? We've got Pablo, Pablo from Argentina. Hey, Pablo. Pablo, Argentina is a big place. <laughs> come on, come on. <laughs> How would you like it if I said I'm from England? You'd be like, well, can you can you be more specific? I'd be like, the United Kingdom. So let us know, Pablo, where in Argentina you're from and what it is that you do. And of course, um, Dom, thank you for that, buddy. Yeah, I'm looking forward to learning more about Amazon SEO as well. When I when I first heard, heard um, that, that, that these guys have built a successful Amazon SEO business, I was I was like, get on the show. So looking forward to <laughs> seeing what, what, what Nick has to share with us. We've got Luigi. Luigi, how are you doing, sir? You're from Italy. Where in Italy are you from, Luigi? It'd be really good to know. Let me try and pronounce your name. Luigi Vanicelli Gassani. I hope so. My, my, my partner, you might have seen her wandering past. She's Italian, so she's probably listening with a keen ear thinking you better have got that right. <laughs> We've got Matthias from Toronto, marketing analyst. We've got Rossella. Anton was just um, on Rossella's comment. She's from Milan. Let us know what you do, Rossella. And yeah, yeah, you, you're right. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, it, dude. It's an awesome name. It's not the kind of name that you forget. You just sound <laughs> like you're from like you're regal or royal or something. Well, then Nick Christensen. Christensen's quite a good a good last name, isn't it? <laughs> We've got our first our first person actually here from 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 India. Hey, Anshul, how you doing? You're from Udaipur, India. Let us know what you do there. And we've got ah. We've got our first Amazon online business owner. So Matthew Sangma from India. Hey, Matt, how you doing, brother? So, guys, 
we have reached the exalted five minute mark my little ticker tells me so if you're just joining i'll say it for the last time please do let us know where you're from what city country as well as what you do and now i'd like to introduce mr nick christensen so he's part of a agency called three pipe amongst some of the other things they do one of the growing segments of their business is the amazon seo side of it which nick my understanding is is in charge of leading that division so nick's going to be walking everybody through if you're thinking about starting an uh, amazon seo agency if you're looking to understand you know how you can build a business around that niche nick's going to be talking to us about three key areas and also taking any questions that you guys have got so guys if you've got questions about amazon amazon seo please do stop bombing the comment section with questions we'll be <laughs> picking them up and i'll be asking nick about three key areas but before we get into those three key areas what i want to do is pass the baton to nick so nick can tell you a little bit about nick christensen and three pipe who they are and how what they do is relevant of course to this webinar nick take it away buddy thanks for the introduction deepak so yeah just some general housekeeping really i guess um who we are um, we are three pipe reply and we're a full service recently acquired independent agency. So we're acquired uh, towards the end of last year by, by a group called Reply, um, the, who are based out of Italy, uh, the owner network, about 120 um, different agencies that allow us to actually have a, a lot more capabilities um, within the marketplace itself. Um, Three Pipe Reply are a full service agency, but I guess where we're a little bit different from some of the other agencies is we are a combination of four different companies that came together over time. Uh -huh. Um, so we started off as a, as a PR agency that emerged with um, a digital and media agency and then merged with an SEO analytics agency, whereas I was one of the guys that, that, that set that up. And more recently, we, we acquired a creative agency um, that allowed us to kind of provide all the different services that, that we were listing um, to our clients and customers in terms of, of, of what they needed um, from us. Um, so I suppose as an agency itself, um, retail is a, a really big part of, of what we do. I think uh, we have a lot of common retail clients across uh, the different services and, and departments um, uh, that, that we manage. And I guess that's what, what leads us to Amazon, really, um, in that, you know, it's it's in retail, you can't ignore <laughs> Amazon anymore. Uh, we know that, you know, marketplaces account for 50% of, of pretty over 50% of online sales. And of that, Amazon is the, the dominant factor. And uh, within the, the marketplaces and equation, um, so that's pretty much our thinking. And in terms of you know, as an agency itself, you know, it's really important. And I think some of this comes from all the original founders of the various agencies to have, I suppose, a, a culture of innovation and always pushing boundaries and trying to find new things, new services, and new ways to excite existing clients um, and, and new clients um, as well. Uh, but in terms of when we develop services or, or you know. Products. I think that the same framework works uh, across those different things. And we probably have about three key stages that we go through. There's a the discovery stage where we look at, you know, what are the business problems? Who has these problems? How big is the opportunity? What the competitors look like? And I guess where we can be unique in, in that marketplace. And I'll go through that in, in, in a little bit more detail. Um, I think beyond the discovery stage, then we, then we come up with a service definition, right? So, so what can we do? What are the skills that we have? What are the skills that, that, that we need? And I suppose that where it gets important is commercially, how, how do we get make a profit out of this, right? Mm -hmm. um, between mm -hmm. the, the services that we offer, and especially around the, the Amazon um, area, that there are a lot of fees on Amazon. Even I think Deepak, you said, ask me questions about SEO, but you know, ask me questions about Amazon <laughs> in general, because we, we have learned a lot over the past couple of years. But you know, Amazon, I think one of the biggest challenges that we have in when we're, we're talking to businesses on Amazon is that there are a lot of different fees that Amazon take depending on which type of selling model that you have or, or, or how you want to, to activate on Amazon beyond the, obviously the referral fees, the warehousing fees, the storage yeah. fees, yeah. the fulfillment fees, the returns, you know, it, it all starts to add up. So, you know, so one of the big questions for us when we're developing this is how do we get our fees in there on top of everything else? And how do, we, and, uh, how do we ensure that what we're doing is profitable um, across uh, the different activity um, that we run? Obviously, SEO is a big part of it, but we also manage um, the, the paid side of Amazon and, and I suppose a lot of the retail consultancy yeah. as well around the, the technology um, that, that we have. 
I suppose beyond the definition of the services, and it's just about implementing, listening, observing. You know, you know, are people reacting the way they they want us to react when we're mm -hmm. talking about a certain thing? And obviously, that's not just the clients, but we we spend a lot of time talking internally, taking the, the different teams through, um, and just getting their feedback. Really, with is this exciting enough? Is this interesting enough? Is this something that maybe the market would, would like to have? And I guess the most important thing out of that is, you know, what does success look like? You know, it's, it's you. How, I think how long it's, have you been with uh, th How long have you been part of Three Putt now, um, Nikki? We joined in 2015. Cool. Um, okay. so, so we set up, uh, I suppose, an SEO thing about 18 months before that. So we, we mm -hmm. did it pretty quickly. So we, we've done this before. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, good, Went good. To market, disrupting a little bit, coming up with a few new ideas and, and, and it's, selling it through. I'm, I'm curious, is, is, is the Amazon SEO agents your consultant space competitive do you have a lot of competition or is there not a lot of competition it's actually pretty interesting in that space because we did a lot of competition research obviously mm -hmm. we listened to all their webinars we attended all their events you we got all their slides <laughs> you went on and got their pitch decks and did all of that good stuff that any sensible agency anyone would do let's just go and find out exactly what the competition and then you, yeah. you you end up taking only about ten percent of it because you you do what you were <laughs> going to do anyway, which is the irony. Exactly. So what we saw is there's probably about three unique areas within that competitive space. Mm -hmm. There's obviously the guys that offer it as a service, as sure. a standalone service. You manage your account, you optimize your listing, you do you do the copywriting. There's obviously the the software as a service guys uh, where you subscribe um, around some of the automation mainly uh, yep. in relation to your your AMS platform, which is Amazon's advertising platform. And then you've got kind of the, the hybrid models where it's a combination of consultancy uh, and services and sure. technology. And that's kind of the space that, that we saw ourselves in, um, even beyond is, is the it, Amazon. Is, 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 that, is, is there more money there, ultimately? I mean, are the guys that are just well, running service with all of the margins? I mean, I've been approached sometimes and I've always, it's, it's always felt like they see it as a project. Deepak, can you, we see that you've got an Amazon <laughs> SEO page on Pearl Lemon because we do. Can we pay you like, a thousand bucks to or whatever yeah. to rank our <laughs> listings and then goodbye and and and, yeah. and 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 that was the challenge that i found when we had a page and we started to rank it but then i thought i don't know how to make money in this space but obviously <laughs> you can answer that question yeah. <laughs> well yes i think it's probably yeah some of it is money and the profitability but i think it probably it's it's the wider skills as well in the agency right because the fastest thing that you can do is use the skills you already have um, I think if you were to just do services on its own, you just don't have anything that is engaging and, and exciting enough for them to go sure. out. I think if you're doing technology alone, then it's an entirely different field that obviously you guys know with subscriptions, but, but we don't really manage that subscriptions and we don't have probably the, the development resource to be able to maintain it and, and improve the software in an outward facing way. Yeah. So I think a combination of the two was kind of the, the the common ground that we found that allowed us to use the skills that we already had. Obviously, we've got a data science team and a few developers went to that team to, to develop a, a lot of well, our own no, software as well. No, not obvious, because the audience don't know. I mean, this <laughs> not is, obvious, this I'm is, sorry. <laughs> this is, this is an that. introduction. So, so let's, let's, yeah, let, yeah. Let's, let's take it back a step. Um, I, what I'd love to know for, I mean, I'd love to know, and I'm sure the audience would as well, is uh, what made you decide that getting into the Amazon space was a smart business decision for for three pipe or for you know the agency that came in yeah. three pipe. What was the thought process behind that? Yeah, well, I think there's probably two key points. I think one is that yes, we, we do have a lot of retail clients, and obviously it's really important to listen and observe the, the different questions mm. that they have. Um, so we were getting quite a lot of different Amazon requests. It, it's not even be even beyond running Amazon accounts, but just knowing what is actually going on on Amazon. You know, yeah. you know, is my market share being eroded? Is thirty percent of my sales going through directly through Amazon without actually going to to my own e-commerce um, platforms? So I think um, after a certain amount of time, but also I think it's important as an agency to to keep I guess your finger in the pulse really, mm -hmm. and you're seeing that you know every month there's a new stat about Amazon. You know I think the, probably from 2018 it overtook Google um, in terms of share of product searches, sure. and that's probably one of the reasons why right now Google are opening up the the, the shopping listings to. I suppose, uh, you know, organic results again, just to, to fight back in terms of, you know, the shopping um, related searches. Uh, we're seeing in certain categories that it's not 55% market share, it's, you know, it's 80% market share. You look at some of the, the different um, electronics and 
And our clients are operating in this space. And so, you know, between all the stats that we were seeing in terms of the, the rate of growth, uh, but also in addition to obviously all, all the you, questions that, that our clients are, are asking us. Do you think that, then, do you think as a, if someone's starting, uh, so we've got like the, the, we've got the crystal guy. He's interested in learning about automating most processes. So I'm going to ask on behalf of Greener SEO, he's asking about hemp, shh. As well as Cristela, <laughs> who's about automation. I guess what I want to ask initially, because we're going to come into those questions, if someone is in the process of launching their e-commerce business, whatever the business is, is your advice launch on Amazon first because that's where you need to be? Or is it not? Is it? Uh... Well, well, I think it's important to look at the Amazon marketplace. And even if you don't have any software or you're not paying for anything, you can actually look at a thing called Amazon's bestseller rank. Uh, which shows what are the products that are selling the most in any specific category, sure. right? And, and on the back of that, you look at the top 100, you can start to look at these products that are selling, what's the price point? What are, what are the product features that does my product fit in there? Mm -hmm. um, so I think on, on the crystal example, you, you, you'd probably want to look at that category first just to see whether you're priced in the right way. It's actually a, a category that, that's selling a lot. And like to say, even with that software, you look at the reviews, right? You, we know that every 15 or 20 sales, you, you get a review on Amazon. So if a product has a, a thousand reviews, suddenly, you know, you can work out that that product is sold. Let's, let's go back to that statistic because you, yeah. you, you use those dangerous words and you said, we know, we don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm saying, but we know as in we, as in from yeah. our experience. So, so every that, 15 um, to 20 sales, you predict one, one review. And then based yes. upon that, you can measure the volume of sales. Is that, is that, is that more or less yeah, what you would use as a metric? You can estimate that. Um, you can Perfect. estimate that when you're doing just some some uh, initial research. Okay. Okay. Amazing. So we've got the bestseller rank. We've got the um, number of reviews. Are there are there any other tiers? I mean, uh, are there are there any other considerations like um, Cristala? I forget your name, sir. I'm so sorry, but I'm going to call you Cristala. So, so so he's also asking about, and this is really interesting because it relates to the broader area. He's saying shipping mm. is a problem in Scandinavia. That for him, he's obviously uh, not decided to. Um, launch or he is on amazon rather but he wants to understand is that a, a big consideration because it must be a consideration from your side in terms of what you can charge clients when they look at their own margins and figure well you yeah. Know, yeah i mean it, it is an interesting area it's a question that we get asked a lot so you know on amazon you can either be a vendor or you can yep. be a seller and not many people know they're two entirely different businesses okay so as a as a vendor amazon will buy in bulk uh, from you um, they'll control the pricing. So if they match, they see another marketplace, the same product uh, has dropped the price. They will match that price. Um, but uh, to be a vendor, you need to be a relatively large brand and it's invite only. Um, so the other option for kind of smaller, mid-sized businesses is to look at the um, seller central, um, which is pretty quick to set up. You know, you mm -hmm. sign up, it's like 29 bucks a month and you can list your products and start selling right away. But once you do that, you have two options, right? And I think that's the question right now. Um, and the options are either to fulfill yourself yep. and save about six, six, seven percent on on the margin, or fulfill through Amazon, ship through their warehouses. Um, and it's not such an easy <laughs> question to answer in terms of profitability, because although you're losing some margin when you're going to Amazon's warehouses, your conversion rates are generally double when the prime yeah. when the prime badge is on there. So it's not a question of either you want to go small to kind of tip your toe into it and and see or whether you want to go volume and sacrifice a, a little bit of margin on the top of that. Okay. I think our recommendation, if possible, is definitely worth looking at Amazon's warehouse. Okay. Um, first, if you can get your products in there at the moment, obviously, well, not obviously, okay, I use that word too much. Um, but, uh, there's, there's a preference for obviously, the coronavirus categories at the moment. So I think uh, the other categories are not getting into Amazon's warehouses as quickly as they used to. Okay. Okay. No, brilliant. That's really, really amazing advice. Mm -hmm. So guys, um, you know, the advice there is uh, if you can use uh, Amazon Prime where and when you can, because you get mm -hmm. up to double the amount of conversions, you of course need to be strong on your unit economics. I think that's the word that mm -hmm. I heard the other day when I was yeah. Googling <laughs> Amazon. I was like, oh, unit economics, the cost of the shipping and then the price for your product and working out basically the returns per unit mm -hmm. and understanding what your margin is. So that was really yeah. interesting to, to understand. And Nick, you're obviously an expert. So let's go back to the first day when you won your first Amazon client. Let's 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 go back <laughs> to that day and talk about talk about that and switch switch the game up a little. 
It, it was a good day, I have to say. I think uh, we celebrated uh, long into the night. <laughs> no, we didn't. Yeah. Uh, we celebrated a little bit. Um, but I think, look, when you're trying to win your first client, it is definitely, uh, it is challenging. A lot of hard work goes into it. Um, and I think in terms of new business perspective, what we wanted to do first was to use our existing network. Um, as I said, we do have already a, a lot of retail clients, but we've also sp spoken to a lot of different businesses for one reason or another. Not all of it turned out into uh, paid work. Um, so we reached out to those first. Um, and then I think uh, one of our, our big things was to kind of go with a, a smaller proof of concept, shorter term contracts, just to, just to show that this stuff works and what we're thinking, everything that we've developed actually works with it, um, within within the marketplace. So I think our first couple, I'm trying to remember what came first. I think uh, Panasonic was our, was our first client back in 2000, early 2019. And that was uh, around SEO. Um, so we're looking at a, a lot of the and was Panasonic a client you already had within the agency yes. you then approached? You? Yes. So we've been okay. doing some some work with them, I guess, across um, the different teams. Um, but I think the important thing is that, you know, in the beginning, obviously, we, we, when you're pitching to these businesses, you, get, you kind of roll out the tank every time, right? So you do as much work as possible and you, you give them everything. It doesn't matter whether, you know, they're, you know it's, it's not like a, a done deal, whether it's, uh, um, I suppose, they may not have the budget or they may not be interested right now you kind of go everything full on and you try to do your best on, on every pitch that you have and you get the feedback off the back of that um but then yeah i think those two gave us some good case studies um, and then and then we just started to talk to, to a lot more people and there was a lot of interest so we were just um, pitching pretty regularly um yeah over the last 18 months or so Oh, I think there was a. No, I apologize, guys. I moved my router and managed to disconnect my entire internet. So uh, after <laughs> after 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 soiling my bottom a little bit, I, uh, <laughs> ten I'm seconds back. of awkward silence right there. <laughs> I was like, Anton is about to absolutely kill me, but uh, <laughs> thankfully we're back. So that's what happened, everybody. Uh, yeah, I, I knew that uh, I was about to get told off, but we're back. Um, so. <laughs> It makes sense about the, the 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 internal side. It sounds like, of course, it's been quite fortuitous and and really really a smart thing that you've got, um, you know, a, an initial cohort of clients that came from yeah. you know businesses that you had already approached. Well, so, go ahead, go ahead. Us, even before we started, I think we we put a list of clients that we wanted to go after. Anyway, the internal ones, the one we haven't spoken to um, in the past. We did have these clients in mind um, based on the research that we they did about the about we the research that we did about the industry right so so he's actually winning those industries how does that compare to kind of market share off amazon so we can go in with a statement like you know you're, you're 15 percent market share but amazon you're, you're two three percent there, there's an opportunity here so i think we did do that preparation work in terms of who we wanted to go after before we even started developing so, the so if there's someone in the audience who thinks oh you know nick i'd like to try and pitch amazon seo to see if i could launch it as a service What's your advice to anybody in the audience on the agency side who's like, you know, how can how can I emulate that, Nick? What would be my first, what would be the blueprint for the first three things that you would do if you were to start from scratch and to launch an Amazon SEO service? Um, the first three things, there's so many things that, that, that go into it, but um, I suppose it's, as I just mentioned probably in the last question, is having you think about who you want to approach first because you can have, a great service, but but no way to get out to market, then and it's going to be quite quite a challenging thing, right? So, mm -hmm. um, so understanding what are the markets that, that you think that you have specialisms in, and obviously there, there is Amazon algorithms and Amazon things, but but a knowledge about each of the marketplaces is, is also quite important. So so understanding who who your target market is, um, there is a level of investment in you know an Amazon service or or any service really, and you're going to have to have, and this is an SEO skill patience and persistence <laughs> in the first few months you make a change and you know, it, it takes a few months before for those materialize so i suppose be prepared to start bare bones and uh, yep. you know manage the the hands-on work as much as you can to your position to um to grow that team um and i think the last thing is just 
observing and listening right to, to everything that, that, that you're doing because even in the beginning we, we had a lot of services a, a lot of things didn't make it through after the first you know two or three pitches we thought ah, that didn't really resonate or, or that's not that yeah. interesting or that doesn't really work so just <laughs> listening and refining right because i think if if the first thing you go out with it, it's perfect and probably haven't thought big enough uh, yeah so, yeah yeah so okay probably, and those three areas and and would you recommend then bundling together the um and guys, um, Abhishek in the audience, I know that there's a, a couple of more people that are asking questions. Dan or Kristala, I know that you've got questions about the reviews. We're going to be we're going to be um, coming to some of the other questions that I can see here. Uh, I wanted to, to 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 move on to the second question that we had in the webinar description, guys, which was um, talking about the. So you're a hybrid agency in terms of having also the software side of it. So let's let's mm -hmm. let's first talk about what made you decide that I mean day one you didn't have software, right? Day one you were manually looking at stuff yourself. What yeah. made you decide to I mean, have you built software first of all for clarity? We have built software in the past um, outside of Amazon. So a lot of stuff around um, paid search, um, tracking, uh, so just to automate right. a, a lot yep. of a lot of the, the the grunt work really. Um so on the Amazon side there's probably two considerations, we built two different pieces of software. I think one is more around market intelligence. Yep. And again, this probably stems from SEO as well, you know, all the work that we do around scrapers, right? And when you look at Amazon, you think that there's a huge amount of information um, that you can actually get uh, on a list page, uh, on a product page, but Amazon don't share that information. So I think it is uh, the intelligence software is out of necessity because mm -hmm. we didn't have the data that we need to do the things that, that we generally do uh, in, yep. in digital. I think the second part of uh, software developed is around Amazon's advertising. Mm -hmm. um, so when you, you know, if anybody's ever done PPC, they, they go into Amazon and it's kind of like Google quite a few years back. You aren't able to do lots of basic things like, you know, ad scheduling, you know, different hours uh, of the day or, you know, automated bidding uh, around some of the different areas. And, and we worked out that th there is a lot of work that goes into the advertising side of Amazon and it takes a lot of time. So if we were to kind of upfront invest in, in some of the software to, to do that work, that actually allow us to be a bit more competitive in, in terms of pricing of the services that we offer. Um, so both those software, we generally use it only for our own um, clients that we, we, we okay. haven't developed it. So it's pretty to, to be outwards um, facing, uh, but it's been really useful and, and impactful within the narrative that we have. Uh, about the okay, service. perfect. So these are internal tools that you've built based upon the limited product information that, adding, uh, the, that Amazon give you mm -hmm. alongside automating some of the, 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 the Amazon search ad PPC element of it. To, yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. yeah. Rank tracking as well, that type of stuff. Obviously it took some inspiration from, from SEM Rush and use your software quite a lot. So that's on. How happy pretty are you cool. right now? That was, cool. that was very nice. Yeah. Let me just see if I can bring, bring myself back. It will, it will focus on me in a, in, a, in a little bit. It's stunned by my beautifulness. Um, I think that that sounds really, really smart. I think it's, I've actually got a couple of questions about that, but I'm going to take the questions that we've got in the audience because I'm seeing there's a stream of comments that have come in. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go through um let's see. Um so Mr. Greener SEO, you are no, in fact, Ian McFarlane, you've asked a very good question. Ian, do let us know where you're from, what what city, what country, what you do. It's a great question. So what are your services and deliverables? I mean, uh, give us give us give us the golden give us the golden egg. Uh, <laughs> Nick is asking. Tell me what your tell me what you sell and how you sell, package it because I want a copy. So advice that you have for yeah. this would be really great. Well, we should probably sell it in, in two areas. I think the the marketing and retail consultancy. Um, I think on the retail consultancy side, it's something that we didn't envisage when we started, but we realized that a lot of people don't know a huge. Um, amount about how to do it on Amazon. A lot of the, the big brands have never been on there. They don't understand the seller models. They don't know how to, you know, stock forecasts and um, manage the different cases. Uh, so, so that, that's one of the the areas that kind of um, encompasses everything that we do. Just to general support on Amazon, then that so is gets that, into. Is that looking at an agent, uh, a business who's currently not on Amazon or has a very limited, ultimately, exposure on Amazon, and you present them with a package to say, we'll increase your presence uh, and, and increase, therefore increase your business, just, just to, to make sure that, that I understand yeah. correctly. Yeah, that, that's correct. So for, for people that aren't on Amazon, thinking about getting Amazon, maybe are on there limited. Even um, a few of our clients are not planning to do Amazon at all, but they want to know what's happening on Amazon sure. because that, that affects their 
their, their retail space. Um, but, I, but I think that kind of wider understanding of Amazon definitely helps and that kind of leads into the specific service based on um, the assessment and opportunity that, that we come up with uh, in yep. each of the categories. So one of the things we always look at is, is as I mentioned, the, the size of the category, who's playing um, in that category and where our clients potentially fit, um, depending on what, what the search demand is for brands or, or generics. And we start to build out a, a, a bigger recommendation and how we would actually drive visibility and, and sales across their products. Ah, um, Ian's from Devon and London. Thank you yeah. for that, Anton. Uh, he's, 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 he's told us. And uh, <laughs> so with that, we're looking at, as you said, looking at uh, their exposure, looking at what you can do in terms of deliverables. What, what, how, yeah. how does that translate then into, um, to extend Ian's question, how does that translate into audits versus ongoing optimization? I mean, are you selling recurring services? Is it bundled yeah. into, like, how, how does it all play out? Yeah, I mean... To be honest, even on the SDSI, we, for, for our perspective, we prefer, I guess, the retained work as a, as a one-off um, pieces. So we always incorporate the, the market analysis, the, the audits within kind of the day-to-day -day activity, right? Because, you know, you look at COVID and the patterns are changing every week, <laughs> every month. So this is something that you, it's not a one-off audit of your competitors. It's an ongoing look um, at, okay, all right, our campaigns are actually not doing well at the moment because then our cost of sale has gone up, but, you know, other people are running promotions or different products are, are in demand right now. So, so we see it as more of a, as an overall total piece between understanding the market, between execution, between obviously the, the analytics, uh, the data and, and the recommendations for going forward. And, and how do you manage, for example, your, your, your like time allocation, client contact for, for, for a service that your end client perhaps isn't that familiar with? If that makes sense, because <laughs> Panasonic are like, well, we're not on Amazon, so we want we want our pound of flesh. Then, Nick, if we're gonna you know, we're gonna pay you, you, we're gonna pay you X thousand pounds or whatever it is. How, how do you kind of play dance that dance, if that makes sense, in a way that it makes sense for everybody? Well, you know, when we start, we we always when we're on the back of looking at the marketplace, we do put together kind of commercial models and forecasts in terms of the size of market, what share we want to get over time. So. We have a pretty clear statement of work in terms of what we're doing, what our responsibilities are, what, what our targets are, our milestones towards um, reaching those targets. So I think we have full transparency and clarity up front with, with any client that, that we have, really. And we, we go through those numbers and, you know, sometimes maybe they're optimistic or sometimes they're conservative, but, but we just have a, an open line of communication uh, to make sure that, you know, we're talking and and uh, and then we're managing okay. together perfect perfect no really good really really good answers yeah. and i think that the statement of work everybody is it's really important in terms of yeah, defining yeah. what you're going to do definitely. versus <laughs> what you're not going to do i think it's <laughs> something that has to be i speak from experience as well make sure the client has seen it before they sign off make sure that yeah. there's a conversation that says this is our statement of work when you don't you can get in hot water very quickly because people yeah. scope hear creep. things and <laughs> scope creep and et cetera. Are you agreed uh, to that? No, we didn't. <laughs> yeah, no, we didn't. Yeah, but, 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 but Frank said this. Frank said that. It's uh, on the document. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Mr. Craig Campbell. I see that you're in the audience right now. And um, I I wanted to um, – so, Ian, if you've got any further questions following up from that, then 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 please do add them here. And I want to um, – I mean, it's a bit of a broad question, but we will take it because um, Nathan has seconded it and so has, has Chris. Vic is asking, high level, and we'll do this, don't spend more than a couple of minutes, can you explain how SEO works on Amazon? And um, I Ooh. imagine that this, I, I want to take this question because it must be part of the sales process because you must have clients saying, well, how does Amazon SEO work anyway? And uh, yeah. it'd be great to get your insights on, on, oh. on that question. I think there are definitely a lot of similarities uh, between, you know, regular um, SEO. Uh, there, you know, there are a few different factors uh, that, that we look at. And, you know, like with the SEO, your, your title tags, your, your, your bullet points, um, your, your, your descriptions on there as well are, are really important to make sure that you're actually matching against the different queries on there. I think one of the biggest differences uh, between Amazon and Google SEO is Amazon actually takes into consideration sales data. So you can have the most optimized listing and you've got all of your images and your video and your A plus content and your, I don't know, how many thousands of words of descriptions and, and, and bullet points. But if you're not generating sales, Amazon aren't going to index you uh, for those query. So on Amazon, SEO and PPC actually work together 
a little bit more than than on Google. Um, but there's a, a lot of other factors Amazon looks at outside of what we can do on the page. Obviously, there's backend keywords as well in Amazon. So you know, with typos and and words that maybe doesn't fit the description, but you know it's relevant, you can use the backend keywords and it's up to a certain amount of, of characters on there. But beyond what we can do with the copy, um, it's it comes down to Amazon's algorithm, and, and they do they they do look at engagement across the, the different products with the conversion rates versus glance views, which is Amazon's terminology. Um, for, for pages, they look at your seller history, they look at your stock. If you start to run a little bit low on stock, you're looking likely to sell out, your, your rankings will, will start to drop um, ac across um, those different terms. But yeah, there are definitely a lot of similar similarities between you know SEO that we know, you know the keyword research, enhancing the, the, the products with, with those keywords, talking about the, the relevant things that people are looking for within a product. I think that's a fabulous answer. So, so Vic, I hope that answers your question, sir. Um, you know, we spoke about the usual on-page things in terms of titles, descriptions, yeah. insert, keyword insertions, misspelling, yeah. expanded <laughs> keywords at the back end. So it sounds a little bit like Google, maybe you know, five yeah uh, longer, a few longer. years ago. Yeah, yeah, a few years ago. So <laughs> I, 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 I've, um, I've been a little bit naughty because I see that Brian Cooper, as well as um, same question as Avishek. So Nick, you were describing um the three point process that you undergo perhaps with with with, with Ooh, clients. My head, I'm sorry. That's okay. I'll wait until you yeah. are you back? Uh, okay. I'm back in back in back in. So, so hey hey Brian from Long Island. Do tell us what you do, Brian. Uh, we know where you're from, which is fantastic. Uh do tell us what you do. So you were describing basically three aspects. So you're talking about um pain point competition. Do you do you recall? Because I, I I actually interrupted you, I remember. <laughs> I think, how far did I get? I think, yeah, I was talking about pretty much like the discovery stage, developing the services. And I think the last point was about how we go to market implementation and cool. just measuring what success looks like. Um, and that was pretty much, uh, you know, Perfect. when we go Perfect. to the market, what's our narrative about what we talk about? And then we listen to the responses that, that we get from, from people who talk to continue to develop and just having a plan in terms of revenue targets, which uh, although, you know, everybody's patient, you, you've got to hit your revenue targets as well. So, guys, I think that, that you know, um, Nick has said something quite powerful there that I want to shine a spotlight on. So, Brian, you asked what are the three aspects? He's talked about pain points, talked about competition. He's talked about market implementation, but he's also talked about financial targets. You know, this is the sales jump that we're going to see. And that's, you know, a really, really powerful thing that, you know, not all uh, not all agency owners do. You know, a lot of people say, well, I don't know about the result that you're going to get from SEO. <laughs> or I don't know about the uplift that you're going to get in traffic. And the reality is, is that if you're in front of a decision maker, you know, that's not going to yeah. sit well for a lot of them. There'll be some who'll say, okay, I understand, but there'll be a large majority that don't. So do keep some of those fundamentals in mind because <laughs> we're not just talking Amazon SEO now. We're talking about uh, selling services anyway. Like, you know, what is the ROI of your work? So yeah. let's, um, let's keep going and looking at some more of these questions. There was another one. I'm going to try and find it, um, my friends. Ah, yeah, so here we go. So um, we're, we're moving, we're dancing between the agency side, as well as those people who are Amazon <laughs> product sellers themselves. So, yeah. so, 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 so Dan or Cristala was asking a question before, is how can we get more reviews? How can we entice more reviews? Is there a kind of strategy that you recommend to clients? Yeah, I think um, Amazon clamped down on, on reviews, uh, probably. Every Everybody's trying so to gain them, right? I mean, I saw yeah, lots everybody. of software where you can, you can get you review sharing everything. and review <laughs> swapping. Like old school link building, uh, yeah. <laughs> that's what it was. <laughs> um, but look, I think what's important is that obviously you have a, a strong customer services um, on Amazon. I think that there are some third party software that you can use, I think with it is AMZ um, feedback and a few others that allow you to automate that process a little bit yep. more. Um, it certainly helps uh, you know, if you know everybody that, that, that makes a purchase gets an email after two weeks or so asking for a review. If you can get a few more, then, then that generally helps. But there isn't a huge amount of ways around it. Amazon have their own service called Amazon Vine, okay. and that's open to sellers as well, where you actually you pay to give products to Amazon to give to their uh, premium reviewers to leave reviews uh, uh, of your products. It does say Amazon Vine uh, within the reviews page, and I know maybe people don't trust those reviews as much as a regular review, but the most important reviews are the first few that you have on the product. Um, so once you get over four or five in, in a category, then it will start to happen naturally. 
So what would you, what's your go-to then for getting the first four or five reviews? Is it that you ask a, a friend to buy one from Amazon directly? <laughs> to be honest, or is it, to be honest or is if it, you're a relatively small seller, then yes, just ask a few friends to, to buy them. Obviously, you don't go too, too uh, crazy on it, but, um, but we generally try to work with Amazon Vine because that's the, the most white hat way um, of doing it to just okay. put a set of products aside, ship it out and yeah. get some of those reviews just to initiate it really. Um, so you can start to generate sales on those products because before you get reviews, it's kind of like chicken and egg, right? Before you get yeah. your first reviews, you're driving traffic and nobody wants to buy it until somebody else has bought it first. So um, Amazon exactly. Vine is <laughs> open to sellers and vendor now, um, as long as you've got brand registry. So it's a, it's a good way to just get started. Okay, Obviously, and friends, then, friends and family help too. You know, and get a few off the, off them, then, then go for it. So, guys, you heard it here first. <laughs> Amazon Vine. If you know, depending upon the size of of of, of business that you've got, um, if you're small, then ask a few buddies, ask friends and family. You know, yeah. have them purchase a product where and when it makes sense. But those two, there's some third party software. But as we can hear, tread with caution because you know. <laughs> You could uh, you could be blow smoke up the wrong chimney and uh, you know get met with the Grinch instead of Santa and uh, not get anything for Christmas. So uh, I'm quite impressed with myself. I ran my over that one. There was another question that I wanted to ask. This was um, from Greener SEO. Greener SEO was it? What was his? What was Greener SEO's name? Was it Mike or was it Dan? Or was it neither? Maybe his name's something else. You, you, Nick's made me feel better. He doesn't. He doesn't remember either. So this is oh. great. <laughs> My memory is terrible. I, I should. I don't remember what green, I had for breakfast. <laughs> green Aresia, you've been with us like multiple times. So uh, excuse me. Uh, hit 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 the dislike. Um, it's still engagement, right? So um, he was asking Dom. Ah, oh, sorry, Dom Dominic. I'm so sorry. Please don't hate me. But I'm going to take your question now, Dom. So Anton. Dom was asking, Green Aresio Dom was asking, how do you charge for this service? We know that you charge a monthly retained fee, but what about the ad side of it? Like, what do you do? Do you charge like a PPC model where you charge it as a percentage? Or what's your strategy when they start saying, right, how much should we dump into the budget? Because that must impact the, your level of work. Yeah, so we, I think on the AMS side, PPC side, uh, yeah, it's a percentage um, of the spend with a minimum fee. Yep. Um, I think if we get to that, but generally what we like to do is price up a, a total package with just uh, you know a rate based on the value that we're offering, right? It's not just purely amount of time that, that you spend on it, um, but but we do look at that. We do look at look at how much time it takes to audit a catalog, optimize it, do the SEO, set up the campaigns. Um, so so yeah, it's it is a percentage fee sometimes. Uh, actually, no. The answer is we're generally quite flexible on the pricing. We don't have one pricing for everybody. There's no so, one size fits all, guys. This is what we're hearing no, from Mr. Yeah, Nick so, Christensen. So some of it's percentage, some of it's flat fee, and we even work uh, on some, I guess, uh, challenger brands that, that we kind of believe in on on a profit share model, and uh, where we get our skin in the game as well, which uh, they, they do like. Okay. Okay. No, perfect. Of course. Uh, who wouldn't, who wouldn't like that if you're a challenger brand and you've got a good product. So, um, I want to, um, Oh, I want to ask the audience. So guys, if you're watching, can you please leave in the comment? Are you, are you a agency owner or freelancer or are you someone who's thinking about building, uh, selling products on Amazon? I'm really curious just because I've got a bunch of questions, but I can not tell with this audience which way <laughs> there's more interest. Like I'm completely down the line because of those. So do let us know whether you're, uh, you know, an agency or freelancer who's looking to sell Amazon services, or you're like, I want to learn how to, you know, explode my 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 product onto the platform. So whilst we're waiting for some of them to 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 come in, I've got a question that was in the webinar description that I wanted to ask, which is. Hmm. You're a team of six people now. I hear it's pretty. Da that's yeah. pretty darn good. So <laughs> let's let's talk a little bit about the growth of your team because clearly there's you know there's this is this is a clearly defined enough and profitable enough service for it to support you know six hmm. people. So I'd love just to get your comments on the growth of your actual Amazon business unit. Well. Yes, the team are six, but we, you know, we do have skills within the agency that are a bit more dynamic. So sometimes, you know, there's a campaign set up, so we, we will kind of reach out to the wider um, agency to, to help us out. So I think we were fortunate in that sense that, yeah, there are six, but we're probably managing more clients than a team of six moment. But luckily, we have a, a few that can help us. Um, but I think your question is more related to 
building the team. Yeah, uh, yeah I suppose. And I guess, I guess we start off with myself and Joe, who kind of uh, co-heads up um, the team. And I guess hey, Joe, uh, in the, I don't know. She should no, be on. We get a lot of silent talkers who listen, and then <laughs> yeah. So pretty much up front, we did all the the grunt work, the leg work, uh, the, the research, uh, the, the service development, and plus and getting into the pitch process and and the narrative in terms of how, how we can get out. Yeah. Um, uh, to the market uh, and and initially we just got our hands dirty really we didn't actually get anybody else in the team we we did the optimizations ran uh, ran the activity um and, and after getting more clients then we started to 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 build that team uh where we looked first was within the agency itself so you know okay. with the different types of skills within the agency it's not just I suppose the hard skills, the 10 years of SEO experience, or five years of PPC, but also some of the, I suppose, different skills around people who are a bit, maybe a bit more creative uh, creators, because we, we know that when you're building something new, that there's a lot of uh, uncertainty. And with that uncertainty, you need different types of people to, to help it grow um, from the ground up. So I think we did look at some of those different areas, who's a bit more creative, who's maybe a bit more functional and operation so that we okay. have a, a, a good plan of how we service those clients from, from account management perspective, from general operations perspective, from so day to day, like you, you, copyright you guys, well. um, It sounds like you guys did really well from having some internal resources that you could start to pull from as yeah. your first base to, to build the to build out the actual Amazon the Amazon side of your agency, mm. which, which, which makes a lot of sense. And given that you've got clients that you're already servicing that you can upsell these products it sounds like it's been a really well thought and executed plan yeah. so, so it makes a lot of sense it makes a lot of yeah. sense and we, we, let's 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 go back so i see that there's been a, a load of comments here um now that come in vic don't go vic says he's leaving what tosh is that tosh is an acceptable <laughs> swear word my friends in english <laughs> so, so so we've got uh, we've got a load of comments that have come in abhishek i do like yours you're a freelancer mostly free uh, so that did uh, that did make me laugh abhishek when i saw that um so we've got a real mix here. So um, I think that um, we've got Fahim, who's interested. So Fahim, do let us know where you're from. We've got at ultimately um, people that are selling products as well as people that are looking about investigating it as you know a, a, a service. So it's really split down the line. With that in mind, I'm going to take John Canetta's question. John, let us know where you're from, what city, what country. Let us know what you do. You're obviously an e-commerce business owner, but let us know if that's your, your main business. So John asks, do you have any advanced organic growth tips, but specifically does EBC, I, I've got no idea what EBC development is. To be uh, enhanced brand content, uh, I think. Okay, okay, perfect. So um, he's just got, <laughs> um, if you've just joined us, John, um, Nick did a stunning bit about the, 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 the mechanics of Amazon SEO. Assuming John did hear that, is there anything else that you want to add for the, the, the kind of bootstrapper who may not yet be ready to take on free pipe services, but says, well, you know what, we need to get cut our teeth first, so to speak. What, what, what general advice do you have for someone who's looking to get started in the Amazon e-commerce game? Well, I, I mean, I think it's a relatively straightforward process to set up an account, get your products on there. Obviously, if you have SEO skills already, some of those will come real handy when, you, when you're actually researching the demand on Amazon. You know what people are actually looking for is you can optimize those listings to, to drive some traffic and i think even on amazon they you know that it's a little bit different from from ppc is that there are some they, they've designed different advertising formats that is pretty much plug and play mm -hmm. um so they've got these things called automatic campaigns where it's a, amazon's algorithm to determine where to promote your products and if you even if you have no ppc or search experience you can set up a product, run an automatic campaign, and just start to generate some sales uh, pretty quickly. I think that's, to tip your toe in the water, that is fine. I think over time with the automatic campaigns, obviously Amazon want to spend the money, you're going to be fine with your different reports that, that it's probably not the most efficient way uh, to, to get profitability um, on is, there. But is, is there software tools that you can directly recommend? Uh, thank you, John. 11-year-old web store. Okay, you are deep in the... The e-commerce game, then, my friend. Uh, so ring up free nice. pipe, right? <laughs> um, are, there, are there other tools outside of what what Amazon offer for the automated ads that you, that you recommend on the retail side for anyone who's looking at bolting that onto perhaps their services? Yeah, I think we use obviously when we, when we were developing our sure. service, you, you looked um, at the competition, and, no doubt. Yeah, yeah, we looked at the competition, and then we signed up to all of them, um, really. Um, and I think probably the best one in market as a standalone that we've used is called Celix. 
So yeah, just shout out how, to Selix. How is that spelled? Is that S E W L I S? S E L L I C S. Okay. Um, it's, it's you might a, want to write that in the comments, um, Anton, if you have the chance to write it on the screen. So yeah. S E L L I C S, right? Yes. Um, so yeah, you can subscribe to them, and they've got some automation um, around the advertising suite. But they also have a few areas around SEO, so some keyword tools and okay. comparison tools, competitor tools. It's I don't remember the, the rate at the top of my head. It's it's not cheap, uh, but I think for what's out there, it's probably the, the best one that we use before we develop mm -hmm. our own stuff. <laughs> okay, no, it makes sense. It makes complete sense. So, so, so I think that that's a, a really good outline. You know, list your products. If you if you if you know, I'm going to assume that a lot of people in the audience know a decent amount about SEO, at least the the, the perhaps the on page side of it. So so do what you can to to rank your products, and then look at the mm -hmm. um, automated ads that, that that Amazon offer to get your initial what swath of sales alongside yeah. amazon vine to actually you know either use that as a platform to solicit free reviews from amazon itself which makes it you know ethical uh, and then perhaps <laughs> move on to the ad space where you can mm. run you know a thousand dollar campaign and see see what that chugs yeah. out so it's, 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 is there anything else that you would add to that because i'm just trying to repeat what the man has said to give you guys <laughs> the the launch roadmap but also <laughs> what you can present as a service. If you've got businesses yeah. who are looking to move on to the Amazon space, what we're also giving you, what Nick's giving you, which is super valuable, is what forms a pitch as well as the actual service. And, and these are the powerful things. So is there anything that you would add to that, Nick? I mean, you've already said a lot. No, I, I think you've covered it really. Um, I mean, Amazon do try to make it easy for you to set up um, yeah. as a seller. Yeah. And there's a lot of information out there directly from Amazon as well uh, around you know how to optimize your catalog and how, how to run your your uh, your advertising um, activity. Uh, so I think I think everything is out there, and you it's pretty much just just really starting. Um, yeah, That's and right, I think right. it's probably good. I think one of the things yeah that could add as well that if you are selling a product on Amazon. Uh, you know, one of the options that you can have that you don't have on traditional PPC is targeting other people's products. So you can actually target products that are similar to yours, maybe same marketplace, maybe a little bit more expensive, maybe slightly you know, worse reviews. And it, we, we get a, a lot of results in terms of not just targeting keywords or categories, but the targeting competitor products or ah. complementary products. So, so guys, it's pretty interesting target, how Amazon have done it. <laughs> if, you tar if you target competitors that have got rubbish reviews, <laughs> Sounds like quite a small strategy if you ask me. You're like, pretty you know simple, what? isn't it? <laughs> Guys, you don't you don't need Nick, you don't need me. Just go Just forth and start ranking. Yeah, 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 exactly. Run ads for, for crappy products, basically, which is which is you know, which is great. Um so um Greener SEO again, uh Dom is asking uh, a great question. He's asking. Uh, I did. I like what you did earlier, by the way, Dom, with the D O M. I saw that a bit further up, just in case I forgot. He's asking, how, how does ad spend on like if I'm if I'm running Amazon products, should I run ads on people, Google or should I run ads on Amazon? And Amazon. Um, yeah. I think one of the the, the issues that you have um, with Amazon is tracking. Um, they're notorious for not sharing data, but you also can't measure, you know, where your traffic is coming from if you're saying to the product page. Um, so I think to have full measurement of full visibility of what's going on, it just works much better uh, with an Amazon system. And there's a few metrics that are important, such as advertising cost of sale is probably the most important metric and sure. in, in Amazon, which is a percentage cost to make you know, a, a pound in sales for, or to the, the value of yeah. the sales. Yeah. So run it within the platform. I think um, you can run Amazon's DSPs to get off the platform to, to drive more visibility around the, uh, Amazon's top 100 com scores. What does DSP stand and, for? Uh, for? Demand side platform. Uh, so okay. you get your you get your ads um, on different sites like uh, okay. you know, I, I, IMDBs uh, Got it. Got it. Uh, of this world. So you can get more traffic outside of Amazon if your category, for example, might not be one of the bigger categories um, at the moment. I'd just like to add, so thank you, Anton, because I was wondering, SEM Rush have their own Amazon tool, guys. So if um, hey. Anton puts it on the screen, sellerly.com, there you go. So forget Sellix, uh, just use sellerly.com, right. obviously. Uh, I, I, did, I do that. apologize. I'm check it out. I, I do apologize, Team SEM Rush. Uh, I didn't know that you had a tool called Sellerly. So uh, you, you, you blame Anton if you're like, why aren't you talking about Sellerly? But there you go. Uh, we know <laughs> we know now that, that, that Amazon does, uh, so that SEM Rush does have their own 
Amazon tour. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't know that. I apologize. I didn't know either. And I'm going to check it out. <laughs> there you go. Later there you today. go, guys. <laughs> um, so, um, so we, guys, we're coming into the last six minutes of today's webinar. Please do, if you've got other questions, um, <laughs> there you go, blame me. Please do <laughs> add questions, any questions you've got about whether you're starting an agency or you're trying to win your first client, about proposals, about projects, whatever it may be. And I'm going to put a little bit more pressure on Nick because I'm going to do some round robin questions where Nick, you've got no Ooh. more than 30 to 60 <laughs> seconds max to answer a question. <laughs> And I'm going to go go straight for the for the meat and bones. So All question right. number one from Christopher Borlongan. And if you guys don't have questions, I've got questions. So it's fine. <laughs> so if, if Google has a sandbox, does Amazon have something similar? Question number one. <sighs> Not as far as we're aware. We know that new products do get a preference. So when you're sure. launching a new product you, up front, you want to drive as much traffic um, to those listings as possible because it counts more in the beginning, but th there isn't a sandbox. I think maybe there is a sandbox in terms of seller history. So if you're relatively new and you don't have many reviews around your seller, you may not be prioritized ar around your products, but over time, you know, as you build that trust, uh, just like SEO, I suppose, um, then I guess that will be not, not so much of an issue. Okay, okay, perfect. Second um, question. If you are launching on Amazon, are there particular niches that you think do better on Amazon than others? <laughs> Right now, coronavirus essentials, <laughs> face masks, sanitizers, <laughs> they do really, really well. But I think uh, what's important is like, you know, we can't ignore that COVID is going to be around for for a while. And right now, the, the biggest categories that we see are, are around the stuff that you do at home, the salon closures, the, the hair clippers, the yep. fitness at home, dumbbells, barbells, weight plates. Uh, cleaning products, groceries, okay, uh, and other sense. essentials. So those are the, the COVID ones. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Yeah. Uh, next question that we've got is if what are the top three mistakes that you see the e Amazon e-commerce owners make? Um, well, you know, I mentioned that, you know, it's easy to start out running automatic campaigns. Um, but I think once you're a little bit more mature on Amazon, you want to run those as only a keyword harvesting part uh, of your advertising activity. And uh, I see that a lot of, I guess, owners will run those campaigns and they're advertising in a lot of different areas that aren't relevant um, to their products on different keywords that aren't relevant um, to their um, products. For example, I was looking at one which was bath toys for, uh, for a... Um, toys company that we work with and they were running automatic campaigns that advertise them for bathtubs so like okay so it's like a, those automatic campaigns are great to start but over time i think it's a mistake to have too heavily uh, rely on them okay i think that's the, the second point the second point is definitely the the seo bits mm -hmm. um and when even when I started looking at it i just didn't understand why there's no information on these product pages this is just like general principles in retail you're selling a product you want to get as much information that, that people are looking for within your products Perfect. And, you, and you look at some of the big brands and you look there's no bullet points the titles don't tell you what the product is it's it's just basic SEO best practice. You're selling a, yeah. you know, a bath toy, say it's a bath toy. It's designed for six year olds. It's a bath toy for six year olds. It's, it's pretty simple really. And okay. You'd Makes be surprised sense. how, Makes how a lot many of sense. people, people get it wrong. I think probably around images and video. And I think there was a question around enhanced brand content and yep. a plus content. Um, but when we talk to Amazon about their A9 or their, their SEO algorithm, the thing that they say that anything that makes the page convert better is going to improve your Amazon SEO. Um, so that is getting all the relevant images to the best practice, different angles, getting a video on those listings, getting your A plus or enhanced brand content underneath just to make the, the product page more, more engaging and sell it. So all these things do benefit your, your, your Amazon SEO. Guys, this sounds shockingly like my, my video on how to build a killer linkedin profile and the core <laughs> fundamental is like just fill out everything like yeah right like, like everything that <laughs> fill is it <awesome>. out <laughs> <laughs> like fill it out fill it out uh, yeah, don't leave the keyword field blank you know put in keywords <laughs> talking of keywords ian is asking what is the best tool for amazon keyword research for your experience well, I use, well, we use um, Amazon's um, retail analytics that it's actually mm -hmm. pretty interesting because it gives you every search term that's used on Amazon on a daily, weekly, monthly basis. Oh, wow. Uh, if you have access to that, it's, it's pretty cool. The only thing is they don't give you search volume, they give you search frequency. So they just rank the 400,000 keywords in order of popularity from one to 400,000. 
but we use that a lot in our research, but I'm not sure if I'm allowed to mention other companies. I'm not sure. Maybe SEM Rush might have um, yeah. some, some well, Amazon let's, keyword tools let's, in this. Let, let, let's, assume, let's assume that we've got the Amazon tool, which is Sellerly.com. What is the other tool for keyword research? That, that, well, that you... I, I, to be honest, I like the SEO tool Ahrefs um, under their Keyword Explorer 2, I believe. Okay. Now, you can actually change it from okay. to, to Amazon. I, so I, 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 in there. I, I assumed it would be a dedicated Amazon tool, but that's, uh, that's fine. No. That's, that, you can blame me for that one, uh, uh, <laughs> Anton. So, guys, we've got, we've got the last uh, 15 seconds. I think that I will finish by saying... Taking Matthew's question then, so does lifestyle, Matthew, I, I don't know if you actually, I'm not sure I understand the question if I'm being honest, Matthew, but we'll put it up anyway. So Matthew's asking, does lifestyle image of a product make any difference to SEO? Well, I think having a lifestyle image will help with your product page and improve your conversion rates. So yeah. as a result of that, it will help your, your SEO. So I think you generally want to have a few product shots some lifestyle images in there and a video that you do. And that's kind of the, the recommendation on the best practice um, uh, across product pages. So guys, we have come to the end of the webinar with Nick Christensen. If you want to get in touch with Nick, Google Free Pipe and Google his name. And I'm pretty sure you can get, get a hold of him if you've got any questions about Amazon SEO or if you want to hire those guys, of course you should. Yes, Do please check. get in touch. <laughs> <laughs> we will both go and check out Sellerly, which is the SEM Rush Amazon tool. And thank you everybody for watching. Do catch um, me next time on, there you go, there's the, there's a tool. And you know, if, if you're not yet signed up to uh, this, this, this list, then you will uh, miss out on catching me when I'll be interviewing other agency owners or Amazon experts like Nick. So Nick, thank you so much for your time. No problem. Thanks for having me. <laughs> See you guys. Okay. Bye everyone.